So in, in French, that would be le bon patient, le bon médicament à la bonne dose, par la bonne voie, au bon moment. If you follow that, if you make sure that you have the, those five days, when you do the medication to the pharmacist, you know, it should be okay. You should have the perfect basket. Hello, and welcome again to the Pathways podcast, where we explore different careers in the Quebec City region. I'm your host, Susanna Tang, from Voice of English Speaking Quebec. Today, I'll be speaking with Vicky Levesque-Gesquier and Kathleen Cameron about studying and working as a pharmacy technician. Vicky graduated from the Pharmacy Technical Assistant Program at the Eastern Quebec Learning Center in 2018. And Kathleen has worked as a pharmacy technician for 12 years. Kathleen also teaches the community pharmacy courses at EQLC. They are both excited to share more about this job in demand. All right, Kathleen, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. I'm going to begin with this question. Can you describe what pharmacy technical assistants do? When you think about pharmacy technician, we already think that we just simply clerks or cashiers, you know, behind a counter. But it's so much more. You actually communicate with the patients. You process the prescription, you process insurance claims, you properly measure and mix medications. You use technology as well as for printing labels, using software for the prescriptions. We're answering phones, giving information about prescriptions or whatever other information they might be looking for. So it's so, so much more than what people think. It's a good thing that through this podcast, people realize how hard it is to be a pharmacy technician. So can you break it down even further? Like what are some regular uh, routines or tasks that you do in your job? There's many tasks, actually. I mentioned a few just a few minutes ago, but also you can do pharmaceutical calculations on a daily basis. So you need to be also uh, really meticulous and very precise in your work. So make sure that there's no error for yourself and for the patient as well. You can do injectable preparation or even we call it cytotoxic agents, which are really medication for cancer patients. So you actually learn how to protect yourself and how to protect the environment to manage and to work with those products. You have specialized techniques as well that you learn. When you talk about the pharmaceutical calculation, can you give right. us an example? For example, there's a lot of antibiotics for children in suspensions, in liquids. So you need to actually calculate the quantity of medication you need, uh, depending on the weight of the child, the age of the child, what kind of infection as well. So, so for some doctors, sometimes the medication is not high enough to treat infection. So you have to actually make sure that the quantity is enough. So those are the kind of calculations that you will do. Uh, another example, insulin. You have to calculate how many units, but quantity of insulin that they might need so that you give them enough insulin for the month. So that's something that you learn through the program. So I guess you're saying that you have to be very good at math then. You have to have at least a basics, and then you learn more and more. As more you work and with school, you learn to actually be comfortable with those calculations. So at the end, you're going to become an expert. So be prepared to juggle multiple tasks and do a little math. Next, let's see what Kathleen enjoys about her work. It's a kind of job that is challenging, but also I constantly learn about new medication, new way of working as well. It could be uh, a new software, a new way of managing the inventory. Also, coming to work with my fellow techs and the pharmacists is, is always fun. I have lots of pleasure going there. It's not a, a must-do thing. It's, I'm just going to work and having fun. We can count on each other. We have great ambience. So I think that's important, too, to actually enjoy your work. So, yes, it's a challenging but it's so rewarding at the same time because you, you communicate with patients, you learn to know them a little bit better as well. So it's a job that I really, really enjoy. Like many pharmacy technicians, Kathleen works in a community pharmacy, but others work in hospitals. What are the differences between the two settings? Even though 
the pharmacy technician will do similar tasks, meaning dispensing the medication. They will be taking the prescriptions and all that. So this is pretty much the same. The major differences between the two is that the working hours will be different and the hospital will be most of the working at nights, which you will really do some community pharmacies, but not a lot. Uh, you might have better condition because they're union, which you don't have in a community pharmacy. Also, higher salary because it's more government, you know, for the hospital. So another interesting thing is that you don't interact with patients, which you do in the community. You will mainly interact with nurses or doctors, no, no patients. So for someone who doesn't like to be with, interact with people, that's what could be a good a good option. Also, you have different types of medication as well in the hospital, like preparing IVs, for example, for, uh, and using some uh, aseptic um, medication, something they won't really do in the community. You will prepare one to, or two days of medication in the hospital, different from QD where you'll be dispensing a month or two months medication. In a hospital, because patient will be there in a few days, you prepare only a few days of medication. So that's a major difference as well. Is a higher salary uh, condition better than community? Yes, but is the ambiance environment better? It depends. Everybody has their own attitude and all that, so they fit in different environments. So people will find their way using the internships of the program, which one is best for them. Pharmacy technicians can also work in other environments, such as pharmaceutical companies, the military, and long-term care homes. Some, like Kathleen, also work as instructors. Here, Kathleen shares more about teaching and how that has helped her become an even better technician. I really love the idea of teaching. It's really rewarding. I've learned to better communicate, actually, not only with the patient, but with the student as well, because you have to actually use words that they understand. And also, it helped me manage difficult students, which I never thought I would, but Having to manage those some difficult students helped me also manage, you know, more difficult patients as well. And the time management as well. It had to be organized to actually be able to give a good class. So it helps me at the job as well. Fantastic. Let's move on now to what skills should someone thinking of a career as a pharmacy technician have or develop? To be a good technician, you have to be a good communicator to be able to give information to the patient. You have to be also responsible and organized. You have to really count fast, but make sure you have all your 30 pills. You know, any mistake could lead. Major outcome could be, you know, the patient being sick or whatever. You have to be in a good shape. You know, you're standing hours and hours. You have to be willing to work in a team as well. If you're not a solitary person, you will find it hard to work in a pharmacy because you're always around people and around patients. And something that's good to have, it's also have an aptitude to use, you know, any robotic devices. You know, you can go to some pharmacy where there's a robot that will count the pills for you, but you have to be able to use the machine. So, but that's something that you will only use, you know, once on site the pharmacy. It's not something that you really need to learn on the program, but that's something you have to be willing and open on the idea of learning new things as well in the pharmacy. That's pretty much the main skills that you need to be able to be a good tech. So uh, if you have most of them, then it's a go. So the nice thing about Eastern Quebec Learning Center is that the students will be able to learn in English. Yes. How does that translate for the workplace? Eastern Quebec Center, you will learn the program in all English. The reason being is that uh, some people feel more comfortable learning in English, but be assured that you will also learn what it means in French so that you'll be ready for your internships or when you'll be working outside school that you know what you're talking about. Remember that even though you'll be working in a French environment, for example, English is always welcome. Uh, If you have new patients coming in, either new immigrants or new people that just moved in, they have difficulty speaking French. Well, knowing that there is someone talking in English is more than an advantage, not only for you, but for the pharmacy and for the patient. It's part of customer service. You know, customer service is to be at the patient's place. And we said that one of the skills is to be a good communicator. And that's one thing that we can do if we can speak English. Why not? So it's just a plus. And the Quebec, Eastern Quebec Center just giving you the opportunity not only to learn the whole career in English and be comfortable with it, you can actually use that language 
to help patients. So why not? It's a plus plus. It's a win win situation for both. And now let's hear about Vicky's experience as a former student of the Pharmacy Technical Assistant Program at EQLC. All right, Vicky. Yes. Nice having you on the podcast. Perfect. <laughs> Glad to be there. <laughs> why don't we start with why did you decide to join the Pharmacy Technical Assistant Program at EQLC? My youngest was admitted into pre-K and I figured I wanted to do something different than be a stay-at-home mom. And I'd heard uh, that the program was supposed to open pharmacy tech. I know they were looking for a lot of them and you help people when they're in need. Like, I mean, a lot of them come for regular medication during the week, but some of them come because they've been hurt or they need advice. And as much as we can't give advice, we're there and we have to listen. And some of these people, you're the only people they will talk to during the week. Like the elderly don't have a lot of family, so they come and they see you and you're kind of a happy face. So I wanted that. I wanted to smile and be somebody that they could come and talk to. Next, I asked Vicky to describe some of the courses in the program. Which one was her favorite? And which one did she find the most challenging? There are 15 modules with two internships in a community setting, which is your neighborhood pharmacy, and then one in the hospital. Also, there is some math because you have to learn how to calculate the quantities properly, like for a child antibiotic, like when you have to do dilutions. There's also the medication you have to learn. There's not only one, there's like hundreds of them. So you have to be able to recognize, especially... When the, the when the 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 gentleman or the the lady comes up to you at the at the counter and says, "Yes, I would like my little white pill, please," <laughs> and then she has ten in her in her files. Um, there's both. Now I want to say logiciel, but both uh, oh, software program. Uh, one for the hospital and one for the community. Uh, there's law because there are laws even in the pharmacies that you have to learn. There's sterile prep. Sterile prep means there are no particles, no contaminants. So you have to dress up in the lovely little yellow gowns. In the hospital, you you have the hospital gowns too, but uh, with a mask, glasses, everything, you have a net. There's a procedure you have to go through to disinfect yourself to make sure that you do not bring any particles into the hut, which is a sterile hut with a airflow. So that was one of the hardest, but it's really fun. I love that class. It's great. You get to manipulate and you play with syringes and you have to uh, make dilutions. So um, that was one of my favorite classes. Like I said, one of the hardest because you have to learn how to work the hut and the flow and make sure that you're following, you're not moving too fast, you're not breaking the flow, because if you break the flow, then you can contaminate and not pass. Anyways, it's a lot of technical, but it's one of my favorite classes. And would you say that that was also the most difficult course, or was there another course that was even more difficult? It was challenging, but then you have to take into consideration not the same thing was difficult for everybody. I also had somewhat of a hard time with the learning the medication by heart because it had been such a long time since I had been in school. Like relearning how to remember stuff by heart was something. But then other people who aren't as technically inclined had a harder time with the, the software. But the ones that I had a harder challenge with was the medication because we had to learn 300 medication. Yes, that's that's just a little chunk of what they actually are. But you had to learn the medication, their name, their common name, their general name. So, for example, uh, if you have Ativan, it's lorazepam. So that's their like generic name. And then you had to learn what class it was in, what category was it a, like, is it a narcotic? Is it a controlled substance? Then you had to learn all the other subclasses. So, I mean, that was something. I guess I want to move on to, like, clearly you're, you're fluent in both languages. Why did you decide to study in English? Uh, I went to primary school, high school in English. And for me, especially the math and the terminologies, all those things were easier in English. And if I had the option, I preferred doing it in English than doing it in French. Because then I didn't have to worry that I didn't un like I didn't understand the question properly or I didn't understand the wording properly. And now with the situational problems and everything, it's there. You have the understanding, so why not utilize it? 
That's true. That's true. Yeah. Having said that, though, I guess they also had to prepare you to work in French. So how did they do that? Because sometimes what well, most environments are going to be in French here. For me, it was never like because I started working in a pharmacy while I was doing my class. So that was always a given. But for cer certain people, they worked also on the French. They had the extra French classes at the learning center. At the same time, they were taking the class to help them out with that. You were just mentioning, actually, that you were doing some part-time work while you were in school. Yes. Did that make it easier to find a job after graduating? Actually, it made it easier to learn the medication <laughs> because you were I was actually with the medication and I had to look for it on the shelves and I had to actually physically like look for it. So that helped out with the learning process. It also helped because I, I was already learning the software. So that gave me a plus. I got to use the software and get accustomed to it more more. It's not a prerequisite. You don't need to. I did it, like I said, because I needed something extra to help me with the medication. Other students didn't do it and they still got job in pharmacy after because it is very much in demand. They need people. Uh, a lot of pharmacies are understaffed. Finally, we'll conclude with Kathleen's quiz on how to know if pharmacy tech is the right career for you. If you want to know if you have the fiber to be a pharmacy technician, well, you have to ask yourself those questions. Do you love to work in a health environment? Do you have a good sense of responsibilities? Are you able to be discreet and to know how to do the how-to, the how, yeah, the how-to? Do you have empathy for people uh, and a sense of listening? Do you have a good memory? It's a funny thing, but you have to have a good memory to know all the medication and all that. Are you able to be concentrated on, on a long period of time? Are you rigorous? Do you love having a good job being well done? If so, then you have the fiber of becoming a pharmacy technician. So come along and uh, learn how to be one and you'll love the job. And that's all for this episode. Thank you again to our guests, Kathleen Cameron, and Vicky Levesque Gasquier for their thoughts and insights. We would also like to acknowledge the Government of Canada for funding this initiative. Join us next time for our talk with Victor Cameron about his career as a video game designer. This is the Pathways Podcast, signing off. Until next time. <laughs>